Coming up today, stocks fall sharply to start the week after the Justice Department prepares a lawsuit against Nvidia. Why this could be history repeating, manufacturing contracts more than expected, the biggest risk this week, oil breaks through support, Russia issues a warning to the states, and Trump flips on cannabis. It's another big week, guys. Let's go. And welcome back, everybody, to what looks like is going to be another interesting and big week in financial markets. Nice little rug pull to start us off, S&P 500. Looking like we're going to break out to all-time highs on the finish of last week. Done a complete U-turn today, finishing down over 2%. 55.28 on the back of a bit of a defensive rotation into utilities, staples, healthcare, REITs and financials still holding up. It was more the NASDAQ getting hit hard today, falling over 3%, losing its 50-day VWAP and the Russell 2000 as well. Small caps on the back of weak manufacturing data, all of which causing the VIX to have a sharp spike to start the week up 33%, back above 20. And September, which is notorious for being a volatile and weak month in the markets, looks to be playing out to trend on the first day of trading for this month. Option deal is potentially pricing in a bit more to come. We can see that with volatility risk premium flipping back into positive territory today. Option deal is demanding a bit more premium to write contracts above realized volatility here. The SKU index breaking out as well. The price of out of the money put options. And stick with me today because I'll come back to bond yields, crypto, commodities that I want to share with you today. First, let's talk about the elephant in the room, semiconductors as a sector fall in a whopping 7.5% today. That's almost getting into crash territory, those sort of numbers. Very volatile stuff here. And like I've been saying, the whole sector could potentially be putting in a topping formation. That's why I've been saying I'll be watching Nvidia closely after their earnings last week. Was pretty good overall. The market's reaction was negative. And like I said, I'll be really looking for this psychological level of $100 a share to be defended, find support and bounce off, at least as a key indicator for the trend and sediment in the important AI sector, semiconductors and tech as a whole really been leading this bull market. Over the past two years, one of the very few things green today, cannabis. I'll also be talking a bit about later. As I've been hoping Trump would flip on the subject, which it looks like he's just done. We're also going to be talking a little bit about gold, why Goldman Sachs has got bullish on it. However, I'm going to show you some seasonality what to expect from gold this month. But first, just looking at some stock market seasonality. Like I've been saying, September, quite often a volatile month. Clearly not out of the woods yet, especially as we go into the US federal election on the 5th of November. And keep in mind, it's normally the last two weeks of September that is often the weakest fortnight in the entire calendar year for the stock market. In fact, just looking at the S&P's average monthly performance over the past 10 years in September, really not good. Average return negative 2.3%. We're only higher 30% of the time. So it shouldn't be unusual to see September finish lower or at least experience quite a bit of volatility between now and the start of October. So it was a pretty rough day to start the month off. However, that doesn't always mean we're going to finish the month lower. Just looking back at history, whenever the S&P 500 drops more than 2% on the first day of the month, we'll finish higher 72% of the time for an average gain of 3.4%. However, this has only occurred in three Septembers before. September 2009, the return for the rest of the month was 5.9%. However, in 2002, we lost another 7.1% after a really bad start to that month. And then prior to that, 1974, the worst performing month, down another 9.9% after they started down 2.3% back then. And we're getting charts like this thrown around in financial social media. Comparisons to 1987. Some say the Nasdaq doing a very similar pattern and could be setting up for the monster of rug pulls. In fact, Nvidia's 10% drop today actually broke a record, raising almost 280 billion in market cap value. That's the biggest drop in value we've ever seen in history. I guess that's an indication of just how colossal in size Nvidia's become. Surely that means we're closer to the top than the bottom, right? Market was already a little soft on Nvidia after earnings. However, it may be the case someone knew something. Because like I said last week, the numbers were pretty good. And now we've just heard the big news today. The Justice Department is taking a major step towards an antitrust lawsuit against Nvidia, requesting more information and documents. Federal agencies investigating potential antitrust issues on multiple fronts looking at Nvidia's market dominance, probing where Nvidia's dominance limits buyers' options for using other suppliers. Advocacy groups claim Nvidia threatens clients that use both Nvidia and competitor chips. On a separate note, we've also got the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, investigating whether Microsoft and OpenAI broke antitrust laws through their partnership. There's a look at the price action of Microsoft today, pretty weak as well. Hasn't been able to reclaim its 50-day VWAP. Down almost 2%, still falling after hours as I speak. And straight away when I read this headline today, just reminded me the same thing happened back in the late 1990s to Microsoft. However, that was back in 1998. The Department of Justice went after Microsoft on a similar accusation. Antitrust, abuse of market dominance, 
operate in Monopoly, dragged on in court for two years, and then in April 2000, literally a few weeks after the market made its historic top for the 90s tech bubble, the judge ruled in the state's favor, said Microsoft broke antitrust laws and it must be split up. The Windows operating system and everything else to be separated. However, Microsoft appealed the ruling, dragged on for another two years, and then in 2002, after the tech bubble had popped, Nasdaq got crushed, they won their appeal, and they didn't have to split up. And so maybe this is history repeating. However, just like we saw back in the late 90s, this stuff can drag on for years, kind of doing a similar thing with Apple, as they've done with pretty much all big tech companies, as they pretty much all do operate monopolies. That's what gives them immense pricing power and stellar returns in the stock market. And on top of all that, there's questions surrounding the company about how much all their clients are going to keep spending on AI build out if they're not seeing a return on investment. That AI infrastructure is not dialing up profitability. Are we going to keep seeing this huge amounts of CapEx if the company's buying all these GPUs, start getting pressure from their investors to see a return on their huge investment? And so given its stellar run and market cap, it's not hard to see why there's a lot of people bearish on it and saying that it's already made its top. With one guy saying it's flashing a sell signal. In fact, this is marking a peak of a 40-year market cycle. Some call it a secular bull market that started in 1982 instead of March 2009. I don't really agree with that because the US stock market went sideways for 13 years after year 2000. Had a multi-year bear market in the early 2000s, 55% pullback in 2008 into early 09. So those were clearly sideways and bear markets. However, everyone throws around their own definition. 10% is a correction, 20% is a bear market. The market doesn't really care about all these binary numbers. It's just going to do what it's going to do. However, it is hard to deny that the price of an NVIDIA is not at least a little stretched here. Just looking at the monthly chart, it does appear to be consolidating. This could potentially be a topping pattern. However, the market's so good at playing gotcha, I wouldn't be surprised if it does a shakeout. Bit of a bear trap, and then who knows, it could hit 5 trillion before we've seen the actual top in AI. Because this is looking at a non-log chart, which doesn't look good at all. However, some say when you've had big gains like this, and especially when looking at longer term data, at a chart close to a decade, especially when there's been a big underlying fundamental shift like the boom in AI. Some call it a chart crime to show a non-log chart for this long. And so if I just switch it to a log chart, actually looks a lot different, doesn't it? To be holding a strong uptrend. And so once again, this is all in the eye of the beholder. It can be looked at both ways. The uptrend's still intact. CapEx is still intact. All the DIJ coming after it is just a sign, like we saw in the late 90s with Microsoft, that they've gotten too big, too monopolistic, and it's time to cut them down if the market doesn't, like it did to Microsoft in the early 2000s. Things are not looking that great. We've got the normally perma-bullish Tom Lee advising caution on stocks, and they could fall 7% or more, even potentially 10% correction over the coming month or two. However, he said that would be setting up for a buy the dip opportunity because the economy and market is still strong. He still likes small caps, and he's worried about the upcoming jobs report this Friday. If that comes in strong, cause a big repricing in the market. On the other hand, we've normally got the bearish Mike Wilson getting bullish on stocks. So now we've got the bullish guy bearish and the bearish guy bullish. And he says the next jobs report could expand the current rally beyond tech stocks and provide markets with greater confidence that growth risks have subsided. He's expecting the economy to have generated 185,000 new jobs in the month of August and the unemployment rate to have fallen to 4.2%. Saying a series of 25 basis point cuts may be the sweet spot for equity multiples if it comes alongside stable growth, while a cut of 50 basis points may not be viewed favorably. And so, I mean, this guy doesn't have the best track record the last couple of years of making some calls. Surely he can't be wrong forever, right? And so it was a bit of a double whammy today with NVIDIA and some manufacturing data coming in a bit weaker than expected. However, that normally wouldn't rock the stock market as much as it did today. It'd be some pretty swift selling. For what's normally a slow and sleepy start to a shortened trading week coming out of these lower volume summer months. The ISM index showing a fifth straight month of contraction in the manufacturing sector with the PMI coming in at 47.2, which was actually up from July's 46.8 but a bit below expectations of 47.5. And there's a look at the overall in the light blue there, which has actually been pretty much consolidating for about a year now. We haven't made a lower low, so it's not like manufacturing's falling off a cliff here. It's just not exactly strong either. And so the biggest news this week will be the jobs report, first Friday of the month. How many new jobs did the US economy create last month? Economists think it's 162,000, some expecting up to 225,000. Came in hotter than expected. Market will swiftly reprice the chance of a 50 basis point cut. And I'd say either way, j Powell's still going to cut 25 basis points in two and a half weeks from now when they meet up on the 18th this month. Unemployment rate expected to come in at 4.2%. I think it'll print 4.2 or 4.1. I'd be a little surprised if it came in at 4.3, same as last month. And I, along with the market, will be really surprised 
If it comes in at 4.4, 4.5, that could cause more swift repricing out there. US economy's still growing approximately 3% a year. However, a lot of that's got to do with government spending, which has been increasing a lot more than GDP percentage growth term. And so bond yields were a little soft to start the week as well. Looking at the price action there. In the two year at 386, market's really not expecting a hot jobs report. Same with the 10 year, still trying to find support now. Pretty much the entire month of August around this 380 zone. But J-Power must be really happy. We just got a big dive in crude oil today. Doesn't want to see signs of inflation coming back because he really wants to do his buddies in Washington a solid and get those interest rates lower so they can refi a lot of debt. US taxpayer spending over 3 billion a day to service the interest expense on their government spending. But in addition to helping out the inflation picture, it's not a good sign for economic growth. Got the important market of crude oil. Giving up this year's gains, dropping quite sharply today. We don't have the best data coming out from China either. Key consumer of oil where Goldman Sachs cut their target price on copper causing a sharp fall in mining stocks today as well potential production increases from OPEC world's still pumping it out at records and there's a look at the daily chart of crude oil futures currently just sitting above $70 a barrel after losing this key support I'd been watching for a little while here around $72 and I think we can move that support box right down to the $70 level see whether it can find support here now and some heavy trading in oil and gas Sector down 3.6%. And the miners took it on the chin today as well. As a sector down 6%. Like I said, on pretty big volume to start the week off. We've got Goldman Sachs coming out with a bullish article today on gold. Predicting it will hit 2700 an ounce by early next year. It's only 7% away from where we are now. Citing central bank purchases, imminent Fed rate cuts, and geopolitical hedging driving gold's appeal. Saying investors should go for gold of all the commodities available to buy. And all these reasons too are why I've been bullish on gold on this channel ever since I started it early last year. And these big macro drivers don't look to be going away anytime soon either. Remember, when you're long gold, you're short the US dollar. Long term, that's been a pretty safe bet. Thanks now to record US government spending, which devalues a currency. However, now that we've got that really bullish article, could be a contrarian signal, at least for the short term. Looking back over the last seven Septembers, price of gold has finished lower. Not only the stock market, we see a bit of volatility, also in precious metals. In fact, the 10 year average is negative 3% for September, the worst month, just like the S&P. And that's because on average, it's also the most bullish month for the US dollar. Typically finishes September up on average 1.5%. And there's a look at gold futures today, just peeling back a bit from all-time highs, sitting above 2,500 an ounce. And there's a look at the dollar. Bounced beautifully a week and a half ago after we got these reversal signals, was well, technically oversold. However, still looks to be in a downtrend for the here and now. And that weak dollar, even though it appeared to have helped gold a bit, over the last month or so. Hasn't really helped Bitcoin. Still below its 50 day. Trading a bit sideways here. And that's pretty much been the case. Ever since it peaked out at all time highs. Back in mid March. And there's a look at a monthly chart. Of Bitcoin. Which again on a non log chart. Could be appearing to top out. On some sort of triple top. However just switching over to a log chart. Just like Nvidia you could say. The long term uptrend is still intact and we may need to see this trend line properly breached to say that the secular bull market in Bitcoin is over. And if that were to happen in the next few months, that would mean it would have to take out 35,000 or at least 40,000. Then the long-term secular uptrend can be technically questioned. Until then, it's still not far off all-time highs. And if we get a change of government that is more pro-crypto, it's kind of hard seeing that not being bullish. However, to switching over to the daily chart, of Ethereum really needs to find some support here soon. Do have a bit of a bullish divergence going on my DSI. However, it needs to hold this level around 2300 for that to be in play. And what makes the move in oil even more impressive, falling swiftly through that support level, is that geopolitical tensions aren't going away. In fact, they're escalating. So we're seeing gold sit pretty, but oil's not really worried about geopolitics at the moment. And after Ukraine, a week and a half ago, sent some drones straight into Moscow. Like I said back then, we're going to see a big response from Russia, as that was a slap in the face of Putin, which he'd never sit there and take it. They're continuing their response, dialing it up, and just sent two ballistic missiles into Ukraine, unfortunately resulting in the deaths of 51 and injuring 271 in the deadliest strike this year. Ukrainian President Zelensky is pleading to the West for more missile systems and jet fighters, wants to continue his incursion into Russian territory and continue dialing this up going into US federal election, in which Russia's just issued a warning to the states and NATO. If Western weapons are used to strike deep inside Russia, the consequences will affect both sides of the Atlantic, hinting and threatening of using nuclear weapons, which he's done plenty of times before as a tactic to kind of dial down the states and West's potential to use weapons against them. However, what makes this time different is Russia's changing its nuclear doctrine as a response to perceived Western involvement in the Ukraine war. This comes at a time where Russia is battling 
an incursion into its Kursk region by Ukrainian troops amid growing attacks on Russian territory by Ukraine using Western weapons. Last time they changed their nuclear doctrine back in June 20. It said Russia considers nuclear weapons to be exclusively a means of deterrence. And so now they're going to change it. We don't know exactly what they're going to do. However, it'll probably be opening up the opportunity for them to potentially use smaller tactical nuclear weapons as part of a preemptive strike. Or maybe it adds in that new perceived threat from the West. And this could also just be part of their strategy to try and deter any use of Western weapons within Russia, which for them is crossing the red line. This also comes at a time where the BRICS alliance is significantly expanding and gaining a lot of clout around the world. We just saw a significant event today with Turkey, which is a NATO member, has also shown intentions and signs of wanting to join the BRICS alliance, basically looking to switch sides. Turkey is an important economy and place on the map for NATO as well. So that would be a big loss for the Western alliance. And so over the last four years, we've seen Putin become emboldened, trying to take more leadership on the global stage, as they try to persuade every other country possible to get off the US dollar. And that's what makes the US dollar under attack from both sides from within and from outside. And it's all this stuff that keeps me bullish long-term on gold. And just after we heard last week that the DEA at Biden's direction conveniently rescheduled their decision on whether they can make cannabis legal or not and reschedule it until after the election. And I'd be naively holding faith in the Biden administration all year to come through on his campaign promise and federally legalize it. However, he just kicked the can down the road. And as I'd been hoping, Trump has come in there and picked it right up as he's shown to be opportunistic with political footballs just like he did with crypto and now we're getting confirmation that he's flipped on cannabis and so wouldn't it be funny if it was the trump admin that actually gets this done after biden couldn't get it done for four years trump signal support for marijuana legalization in his home state of florida said he thinks it's going to be actually good said whether people like it or not this will happen through their approval of the voters and interesting to hear him say we do not need to ruin lives and waste taxpayer dollars arresting adults with personal amounts of it on them. And no one should grieve a loved one because they died from fentanyl-laced marijuana. He also praised the use of medical marijuana, saying I've had others and doctors telling me that it's been absolutely amazing. He also met with a top marijuana company CEO to learn more about the subject. And politically, this is just another smart move for him to make. As I'm sure a lot of voters with Biden have been disappointed that he didn't keep good on his campaign promise. So he's sure to pick up the cannabis vote, just like he's got the crypto vote, and he's trying to pull people from the center now that he's got RFK on board. With him also mentioning there shouldn't be anyone in jail right now for something that's legal across many parts of the country. And so once again, as a cannabis investor, I'll be hanging in there, hoping somebody, anybody, eventually does the right thing, does what the science tells us, and does what 80% of Americans want done, which is just plain common sense at the end of the day. And so I know it's been a really volatile ride, sure to be for many more months ahead. However, once again, the cannabis ETF MSOS could be setting up for a contrarian play. Again, just looking at the monthly chart, it's been consolidating. Big signs of stage one accumulation for over a year now. And now we're down the bottom of the range. This would be a contrarian bet as pretty much everybody's given up on it. They're sick of the volatility. Really disappointed the current administration wasn't able to get it done. However, the next one may just be able to come good on their word. And there's the economic calendar for today. Switzerland's GDP growth coming in a lot better than expected. 1.8% year over year. There's the manufacturing PMIs out from the States. Like I said, wasn't all that bad. However, still in contracting territory. Looking out tomorrow, we get to look at how the Australian economy has grown. Going into Wednesday, interest rate decision from the Bank of Canada. Into Thursday, services PMIs, ADP employment. And then like I said, the big one Friday is the non-farm payrolls. Unemployment rate expected to come in at 4.2%. That's what the market's going to really be looking forward towards come this Friday morning. And going into that, market is pricing in 62% chance the Fed will cut rates by 25 basis points this month. Keep a close eye on that after we get the jobs report. And just looking at a five minute chart and the after hours action of Nvidia as I speak, still trading down another 1.7% after hours. Now down over 11% for the day, trading at 106, pretty much getting into that big psychological level of 100, 101, 102 per share. We'll be looking for it to be defended and find some support because that was quite a big slide for the semi sector today. 7.5% on big volume. Really didn't like that news about NVIDIA getting approached by the Department of Justice. Potentially putting their fat operating margins under threat. And we did see that coincide with some bearish breadth across the board. A lot of sectors coming off hard today, especially the miners. Even aerospace and defense sector fell over 3.4% today. Doing the best, consumer staples. Bit of a defensive rotation going on here. And the VIX definitely waking up to start this normally volatile month. So as I've been saying, we're not out of the woods yet. 
We may not be out of the woods until after the US federal election. The next two months could be a bit of a roller coaster ride. Have a stick with Click Capital and I'll keep you updated all along the way. Thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you again tomorrow night.